Hello, and welcome to episode two of Bookworthy. Oh, excuse me. How are you doing, folks? I guess UFC 280 is in the books, and uh, I am just... I guess I'm kind of baffled, you know, a little bit by everything that happened. Uh, I really enjoyed most of the fights. Uh, I know everything has kind of been uh, considered weird, and, uh, you know, I respect that. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I love Islam Makachev being amazing, you know? Uh, you know, I'm not like, you know, the guy's personality doesn't, doesn't light the world on fire. But I remember in the, I don't know, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, guys like John Fitch would be just mauling people, vir virtually unstoppable, you know, for large swaths of their career. And in my mind, I thought, God, if this guy would just develop a submission game, he could, he could kind of break through this, um, whatever we want to call it, PR problem that he had between himself and the fans, between himself and the and the promotion, you know, he was very obviously disliked by the UFC um, matchmakers, PR side of things. And I always thought that a guy like him in particular could do really well if they could finish. If they, you know, if you have a dominant wrestling game and, you, and you're not a, not a straight, you know, finisher via strikes, then... You know, you know, submission finishes do, do seem like a logical path. And you know, as a, a truly, truly, um, what's the word? How would I describe myself? Uh, um, not good grappler. I'm not going to make believe that I, you know, you just develop this finishing game. But however, that all said, I feel like this late era those last couple fights by Khabib and then uh, and then this new you know recent run by Mahachev uh, I'm loving it I'm loving it from like a from an exterior point of view um, I guess uh, I'll use that um, yeah okay let's 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 move on uh, Aljamain Sterling uh, TJ Dillashaw, I, I maybe if you know you follow my work over on Bloody Elbow, you know that I, I made a cartoon about how you know the TJ Dillashaw situation was not TJ Dillashaw's fault. Um, you can get mad at one person for one thing, but if you choose not to acknowledge the greater forces at play that put them in these positions, then you know, uh, then enjoy living in a storybook world where every decision is easy. And there's good guys and bad guys and the right thing and the wrong thing to do. That's it. There's no two ways about it. There's a system at play. There's a structural forces that um, individuals cannot cannot contend with. That all said, I'm, I'm loving the uh, Aljamain Sterling reign, even though I got a little thing to say about him at the, for the part two of this uh, video. And Bookworthy is our... There's our series, and uh, then there's kind of a what I would call the uh, coping mechanism for how to how to deal with MMA, how to be a fan. Uh, I'm I'm enjoying the guy. Uh, I think it's kind of a weird that Sean O'Malley, uh, you know, it's not weird. You know what? The, the UFC has done this a million times, where if one person wins, they're definitely getting the title shot, and if the other person wins, well, they want to fight. And we've seen this happen many times. It's, you know. Usually, this happens when there's like a number one content, number one ish, contender ish fight. Uh, the last two um, Magomed Ankalaev fights have been like that. He's beaten Anthony Smith, who lost via you know injury or broken ankle, and then the uh, Tiago Santos win, uh, which was by decision, where Ankalaev got dropped, uh, I think, in the first round, and then. Uh, you know, outpointed and outclassed to Santos, but definitely a lackluster decision. I'm fairly certain that 
if Ankalaev had, a, you know, you ever see that front kick knockout that he has, uh, any, you know, the beat down he put on Volkan Ozdemir, um, check that out, Fine Art of Volume, Fine Art of Violence, Volume 3, I got a painting of that, uh, that Ozdemir fight. If he were to put on one of those performances, we would be talking, you know, maybe Glover wouldn't have gotten that, um, that rematch. This is no shock, nothing shocking about what I'm saying. The rather surprising part is that O'Malley uh, put on a, just a fantastic performance. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna begrudge the kid a single thing. Sean O'Malley had like the performance of a lifetime, um, especially in the context of who he has been up until now. Up until now, he has been the Michael Venom Page of the UFC. That's it, you know. Uh, and and this kid just, I I as much as I watched the fight, I've, I've rewatched the fight maybe two two times now since the first. And I, even the even the first time, I I watched his fight face the whole time. Uh, watch his face whenever he gets taken down. Um, he really is like, like, he is going to war with Peter Jan and with his own internal self. And uh, I, I'm confident in saying that just by, by virtue of his response in the post-fight interview. This is a guy who felt his back up, metaphorically up against the wall. And you watch him take these, you know, deep breaths, this like, look on his face. Um, I'm actually working on a drawing right now of uh, Jan in the second round, the one ex clearest round that was uh, of the fight that said Jan might win. This, this image of, of like Jan trying to you know lay some ground and pound after uh, rocking O'Malley and taking him down. And I was just struck by the um, the physiology of the pose, you know, Jan in that like very classic, you know, ground and pound stance where he's on his feet, bent at the waist, you know, he's got one arm kind of, uh, I think maybe maybe uh, O'Malley has like wrist control or is fighting off Jan's uh, left arm and then Jan is just his, you know, has, has the, uh, the right arm cocked about to, he's actually, he had been swinging from his hip towards O'Malley and then swung across his own body kind of for a, Kind of a hammer fist type blow that was about to land. And O'Malley is like gritting his teeth. He's got a butterfly hook in and, and another one maybe like over Jan. No, I think he's, he's trying to get two butterfly hooks in and he's got one wrist control on one side and he's trying to block with his, uh, with his opposite hand. And uh, I, I loved it, I, you know. I don't have to like O'Malley as a person. Um, I heard this on uh, on a co-main event, and uh, you know, really, you know, I'm the same age as those guys, and it's like, man, he's that ain't for me. You know, he's not trying to get me to be his fan. You know, uh, middle-aged man. <laughs> but I, you know, I always I like a flashy striker any day of the week. You know, and uh, I respect the kid now. I respect him plenty. Let's see, uh, Manon Fioro and uh, Caitlin Chukagian. That was, uh, you know, uh, painful to watch. Uh, Fioro, uh, I've had my eye on her since early 2021. Um, you know, she came in and kind of blew the doors off a couple girls. And then, um, let's see, Myra Buena Silva, I think. That was her first real step up in competition. And you could see, you could see, you know, she, she can control range, she can control distance, she can fight a good long game, but her striking is not impactful enough. And I'm not saying she can't hit hard, I'm saying that the strikes that she's landing on people, uh, especially these higher level fighters, and I would include Chukagi in there as a continuation of this narrative, they they don't scare people off. 
You know, you, you've seen fights where someone tastes power and it changes the dynamic of the fight. Um, the best example I could think of is uh, Rumble Johnson versus Phil Davis. You know, uh, Phil Davis seemed like the kind of person who is tailor made to beat Rumble Johnson via um, what's it, dispiriting, you know, I, you know, drag him down, tire him out, wear him down, break his will. Forget it. Phil Davis tasted a couple shots and he just could he was out of the fight. You know, it's a three round decision, but Rumble Johnson was like just like it's like a cross country race in which one person just gets further and further ahead as time goes by. I'd love to see uh, Fioro um, fight for the title one day. Uh, I really do enjoy watching her fight. Um, I think she's got a killer instinct, but I think uh, perhaps, you know, as she moves up the ranks and these people are just literally just tougher, you know, um, might have to find a way to, I don't know, engage on, a, on another level to... Uh, you know that the Michael Bisping thing. You know, you stick and move, but you got to sit down at some point and uh, and, uh, and land in, in a meaningful way that changes the the timber and tenor of the fight. Um, you know, uh, I've I've heard both very positive and very uh, pedestrian uh, compliments towards Bilal Muhammad, uh, and quite frankly, uh, you know, I'm happy for the guy. Uh, I'm happy to see him make his his move up the ranks. He's got three high-quality wins in a row. He put it on Stephen Thompson. He, you know, maybe he didn't uh, wow people, but he got through Vicente Luque. It's always nice to see somebody avenge a loss. And now he has a, a highlight reel stoppage on Sean Brady. I think uh, this is this is it. This is this is his time to shine. You know, I would love to see him run it back with Leon Edwards, honestly. You know, um, I think there's, who is it? I mean, would it be crazy to see him versus like Kamzat? That would be wild. That would be fun. I don't really know what, what division Kamzat's going to be fighting in. I mean, the man tried to retire and came back. Now they're saying, oh, he's going to fight at 185. And let's just, let's just sit back and wait. All right. That's uh, th those are the bookworthy fights from uh, UFC 280. We have uh, TJ Dillashaw. I'm I'm probably gonna do an image of just. I might even do it for, like the from behind shot where Sterling has him mounted, and he's just raining down shots from below, and uh, Dillashaw's legs are actually up in the air. Uh, I think that's a good good pose to like kind of convey the helplessness of the moment. Uh, Mahachev, uh, Oliveira, honestly, I might have to uh, go with the Mahachev portrait. Maybe even do him with Khabib, just because uh, I feel like uh, you're gonna, we're going to be seeing a lot of Khabib as his uh, Bobby Heenan, Paul Heyman, you know, like we're, we're going in that direction. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, you know, uh, O'Malley Yan, I'm already working on that, and... Uh, Muhammad uh, versus uh, versus Sean Brady. I feel bad for Sean Brady. I feel for those uh, those shitty kind of uh, shitty kind of um, things that fans were saying to him. I, it blows my mind. Like, <laughs> I look look. People talk shit to a fighter like because they talk shit like it's a sports event. I I understand that. To Talk shit to a fighter because you lost money gambling. That's some telling on yourself shit. Anyway, and that is the perfect segue to the uh, part two of this uh, series in which I have come up. Uh, I was chatting with somebody on Twitter and um, the, the, the saying, love the band, hate the fans, came up. You know, any, any sort of pop culture uh, phenomena in which you have no problem with the content, but you, but the fan base ruins it for you. Uh, I've I've kind of come up with my my take on that for for MMA, and it's you know love the sport, hate the people, 
and it's like it kind of extends like anytime you know you see this uh, these things about Al Jermaine like kind of defending Andrew Tate defending some of his takes on people who uh, suffer sexual assault um, You know, there was, there was a great moment in his rationale about, about going to bad neighborhoods, and uh, I couldn't help but wonder, like, you know you know what happens in bad, bad neighborhoods? People are born there. And, you know, are we going to fault people for being born in uh, dire situations? I don't know. Just the tiniest bit of scrutiny can sometimes upend the grandest of uh, theories. Anyway, uh, yeah, between the promoter, the fans, the fighters, uh, you know, uh, people will chip away at your ability to enjoy the sport. And uh, I'm just going to try and come up with some coping mechanisms not to do that. Uh, I'll acknowledge it. I'll acknowledge it. So I'll, I'll say that uh, I'll say that Aljamain's defense of Andrew Tate and uh, blaming people for being in bad neighborhoods, that's a rough one. But Sean O'Malley. I love the sport sometimes. All right, everyone, take care of yourself, and I will be back. I don't know, I'm thinking like Monday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, something like that for this. Uh, I'd love to do a twice a week uh, publishing schedule. Thanks for your time. Uh, drop, me, drop me a comment. Let, let me know what you'd like to see, what you'd like to hear. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about life in Denmark if you want, because shit is wild here. It is wild. And I'll tell you plenty of, if you want some old stories about growing up in New York. Um, I lived in New York City my whole life. Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, baby. All day, every day, 718. Take care. Bye.